My name is Margaret Rand. I am a scientist uh, in the Division of Hematology Oncology and the Research Institute at the Toronto Hospital for Sick Children. And I am a professor in the departments of Laboratory Medicine and Pathobiology, of Biochemistry and Pediatrics at the University of Toronto in Canada. Marion Packham was my PhD supervisor 40 years ago. And uh, we went on to become great colleagues and friends. So it is my honor and privilege to say a few words in memoriam of Marion for your for this ISTH series. In saying these few words, I'd like to acknowledge input from my co-authors of Marion's obituary that was published in JTH earlier this year. And these are Raylene Kendall Rathbone, who was a close colleague of Marion's, and also uh, Peter Gross at McMaster University in Hamilton, and uh, Marco Catania at the University of Milan, who remember Marion fondly, especially her mentorship of them. Marion was a true pioneer of platelet research, not only in Canada, but internationally as well. In the 1950s, she completed her uh, PhD in biochemistry at the University of Toronto. And in the 1960s, while raising her young family, she became a part-time research associate with Fraser Mustard, studying the effects of blood flow and diet on vascular pathology in pigs. With this experience, Fraser and Marion came um, uh, to be decades long collaborators. And this started off Marion's own distinguished research career, studying platelets and thrombosis and atherosclerosis. Uh, in the early 1970s, Raylene Kinlow Rathbone joined Fraser and Marion and research collaborations between the two groups uh, at the University of Toronto, where Marion established her base and McMaster University in Hamilton, where Fraser and Raylene were based, research uh, collaborations uh, flourished. There was a unique synergism between Marion's basic biochemical approaches and Fraser and Raylene's clinical backgrounds that was extraordinarily productive. Marion's internationally recognized research focused on platelets, the biochemistry, physiology, and pathology of platelets and their roles in hemostasis and arterial thrombosis. Among many avenues explored, were mechanisms of platelet activation in response to a variety of stimuli, pathways and membrane receptors involved in platelet adhesion to each other and to surfaces in vivo and in vitro, signal transduction uh, pathways activated upon stimulation and the effects of drugs on these processes, and platelet heterogeneity and factors influencing the survival of platelets in the circulation. Marion published over 300 peer-reviewed papers, including many invited review articles. One early review article was entitled Factors Influencing Platelet Function, Adhesion, Release, and Aggregation. It was published in 1970 in Pharmacological Reviews, and it became a citation classic of the ISI, the Institute for Scientific Information, as did a paper describing the isolation of functional platelets. So the preparation of suspensions of wash platelets, which is a technique still used worldwide by many investigators today. One of Marion's most notable observations was made when uh, she was preparing a presentation on the effects of sulfonpyrazone on platelet function, with the obvious question being, well, what effect would another non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug like aspirin have? This led to the presentation of the first abstract describing uh, the effects of aspirin on platelet function. It was presented at a symposium in the US in 1967. And well, um, as they say, the rest is history, at least when it comes to aspirin and platelets. Marion had a tremendous impact on others in the field of platelets. Trainees and visitors, uh, visiting scientists, colleagues who spent time with the Toronto McMaster Consortium of Mustard, Packham, and Kinlaw Rathbone benefited tremendously from Marion's mentorship, um, having stimulating and challenging interactions and discussions with her, benefiting from her insights, her encyclopedic knowledge of the literature, and her thoroughness. Many trainees went on to achieve their own scientific prominence, holding research positions not only in Canada, but in Australia, Europe, the US, UK, and Japan. 
Um, Marion uh, uh, belonged to the ISTH, of course. She um, had been a member since 1979. And in the mid-1980s, she served as its secretary for the International Congress uh, of ISTH that was held in Toronto in 1981. She played major roles in the organizing committee and the scientific program committee. In terms of what else people should know about Marion, at the same time she was contributing to platelet research, she was making great contributions to the University of Toronto and its Department of Biochemistry. She was a devoted and inspirational and innovative teacher of undergraduate and graduate courses. Um, and she was also an effective and efficient administrator serving on a myriad of departmental and faculty and university committees, often in leadership roles. Deservedly, uh, Marion was well recognized for her accomplishments. Uh, the recognition that she was most honored by was her uh, appointment to the, um, as a member of the Order of Canada in, in, in 2012. Outside of work, Marion uh, was an avid skier in the winter times and she spent as much time as she could in the summers at her beloved cottage in Northern Ontario. In her retirement, she took up the game of golf which she annoyed tremendously. In terms of personality, Marion had a reserved demeanor, even with people she knew well, but she could surprise with a wicked sense of humor. And she always showed an amazing sense of kindness and generosity. She was small in physical stature, but she had a very big heart. Marion's accomplishments were made at a time when uh, the obstacles facing women in science were not institutionally recognized. And she met these challenges, approached these challenges with, um, in, in keeping very much with her personality. She kept a stiff upper lip, she pressed on, and she let the quality of her achievements speak for themselves. Marion's excellence in and passion for research and education were a inspiration to all with whom she interacted and her legacy will live on through those whose lives she touched.